Rough and Eman in the morning. Welcome back, Pubsters, to another episode of the Apple Pub. Yeah, today we got a ton of leaks to cover, so please stay tuned for that. So the first story of the day has to do with Intel and Micron making a new type of memory, the first in 25 years. Yes, uh, this memory, it's a non-volatile memory, which means it functions kind of like your hard drive. When you turn off your computer, it still uh, retains data, but it also can replace your digital RAM to an extent. And this memory is said to be, uh, get this, a thousand times faster than traditional memory. And that's just insane. We usually see like, 10 times increases, but not even that, more like 20% increases. Yeah, so. and this is just nuts. Like, we could uh, analyze so much more data at once, access things way quickly. I thought SSDs were amazing, but uh, this blows it out of the water. It's 10 times denser, too, so it takes up less space. Uh, more thinner devices, expect that. Apple will take advantage of that eventually. And do expect the fact that because it's a new technology, it is going to be pricey, so it's going to be in uh, tandem with NAND technology. It's not going to be a standalone currently. They might use it on something like the CPU to bring your you know, L3, L2 cache memory, uh, you know, uh, increase that at the speed. Uh, yeah, basically like, like the fusion drive, like SSDs were too expensive, so they kind of mixed both uh, regular and SSD hard drives. This is going to take years to roll out and even more years to become a, a standalone, uh, get out of the door product. Yeah, know? I mean, so look how long it's taken for SSDs to become like mainstream popular to be able to, everyone can afford to use one. Before yeah. it was like, oh, you could barely afford like the 128 gigabyte uh, hard drive of SSD because it costs like $500. Uh, yeah, a lot of MacBooks <laughs> still come with standard like 128 gigabytes. So they're gonna milk this, uh, especially Intel. They're not gonna, you know, release this uh, mass production. It costs more right now, but you know, don't expect it anytime They soon. did state that it's going to be, you should be seeing the first kind of iterations of it within this next year. Yeah, so again, the Fusion Drive-ish kind of solution. So look yeah. forward to that. We'll include a link down below so you can check out more information on it. Apple is set to be releasing the iPad Mini 4. It's going to have a slimmer profile than As the previous gen. Usual. Yeah, and <laughs> it's also going to have the internals of the current iPad Air 2. So it's going to be quite a big upgrade because uh, right now it's a few generations behind on the chipset. And we had also heard that the iPad Air 3 wasn't going to be coming this year, but it seems that they will be bringing an update with the A9 processors. So we have that to look forward to later this fall as well. Even though we've been hearing that Apple's market share in the tablet market has been falling, it's currently sitting at 25% when back in 20... Less, yeah. yeah, less under 25% where just back in like 2012, they, were, they held about 60% of the market. Uh, so it has, it was a big drop in the beginning because everyone became, came out with their uh, tablets and stuff, but right now it's sitting, it's been slowly going down every year. So Apple really needs to come out with something, you know, come out swinging with something new, which kind of really points, you know, towards the iPad Pro as well. So it's likely that they're going to be coming out with a three lineup, uh, tablet market this this uh, fall. Yeah, and coupled with iOS 9 and multitasking, it looks like they're, uh, you know, uh, bringing out their big guns and, you know, hopefully it works out for them. Uh, you know, Samsung's been lo losing sales too and all the big people, they're going to lose sales as all these... Uh, smaller companies yeah, smaller with cheaper companies. products are coming out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and especially when uh, tablets are way cheaper when you get it outside of Apple. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully Apple's strategy yeah, works. Yeah, they definitely year. need to bring out something new, which I'm assuming is going to be they're going to have all their lineups new to have the mini going for them, the regular iPad Airs, and their, the Pro, which is going to be trying to take a chunk out of, yeah. uh, what is it, Windows Surface lineup. It's definitely going to be the year of the iPad, so we're looking forward to it big time. As we had mentioned last week, CarPlay seems to be becoming the norm with certain manufacturers. We had talked about Honda bringing out in their Accord 2016 models, uh, GM uh, thinking about bringing in their models, but it seems that Volkswagen has already started shipping out car models with the CarPlay installed. Yeah, and it's good to hear because uh, mostly we've heard American uh, manufacturers were going to do it. Finally, Honda and the Japanese uh, come into it, and now the German are getting on board as well. So really good to see that they shipped that out pretty quickly. It's ready in uh, dealerships today. So uh, look forward to that. And if you're in the market for a car, definitely check out Volkswagen. In news that we're most excited about, there's more rumors surrounding the legendary Apple TV. Uh, BuzzFeed has reported that it is expected to finally be announced this September alongside with the new iPhones and iPads. 
so yeah, we have that to look forward to. Of, of course, there's still the rumors around that it's going to be including the A8 processor as well as a new uh, touchpad remote, which is supposed to be much better than the current model's remote. Um, well, along with that, it does seem that the Apple TV streaming service will be lagged again uh, because obviously they're just not ready. We were expecting yeah. both of these to be launched at WWDC in June, but again, it seems it's postponed just, to yeah. early 2016. They're probably going to announce it, um, but not go into the negotiable, negotiable parts of it, or it'll just be left out completely. I'm still excited. I don't care about you know the TV service being delayed. The fact that it's slimmer, new remote, Siri enabled. And the big thing, the App Store and developer APIs. This is going to be uh, the most exciting thing happening with Apple TV in a very long time. Yeah, it hasn't been updated since 2012, I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's going to be a big change for those of us who are still using the Apple TV 3. Um, again, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm still kind of sad that the streaming service isn't coming alongside it. I was kind of hoping to get that. Uh, what? I, I, don't <laughs> know, I thought it'd be kind of cool. They, they are saying it's supposed to be expected to be around 30 to $40 a month for about 25 channels. Yeah, but, and I'm just so excited for the product and the apps and all that that it, I could, you know, mess around with it for a few months, use Netflix and Hulu until uh, the actual TV streaming service comes. So. Um, yeah, look forward to that. We'll see what happens when uh, September comes. So we'll end today's episode talking a lot about iPhone 6s leaks as well as news including about the 6C. Yeah, so basically uh, a lot of people have been holding out hope for uh, iPhone 6C. That's a 4-inch model of essentially an iPhone 6. Um, doesn't look like it's going to be happening anymore. Um, uh, uh, Mostly I due to the fact that the sales were so high for the 6 or, and demand was so high for the 6 that they think it might cannibalize the sales of the 6 if they were to release a 6C yeah. along with the 6S. Yeah, because the iPhone 6 is going to be reduced to $100 with a contract and they don't want people, you know, considering the C, which will cost less. So they're probably going to nix it. Uh, but you did mention... Yeah, there was some news about them releasing a 6C model later in 2016 instead of alongside the 6S. But I don't know how likely that's going to happen because... Apple has never ever released, you know, a model halfway through the cycle. So yeah, it just seems very questionable, but uh, we'll see what happens. But right now, it, lo it doesn't look too bright for the four-inch iPhones. Yeah, but we do have a bunch of news about the new 6s. There's been a bunch of part leaks again. It seems uh, Apple's not really holding uh, their security isn't too going too well in terms of holding back information of the parts being leaked this time around. So the folks at nowhereelse.fr are at it again and they've leaked more iPhone success parts for us to look at. Uh, they've released the uh, internals for the flex cables which are two, which used to be two, two separate pieces. parts and now they're one. And uh, more interestingly... Yeah, they've also leaked the lens rings which uh, confirms that the new 6S will also be protruding, having protruding camera lenses at the, uh, at the back. Yeah, which is pretty much the main uh, practical information we got from this leak. There's nothing else that, that's really a, a change. I mean, that's not even a change technically speaking, but it, it does confirm there's minimal design changes as we expected. And there's that, some internal changes, obviously, uh, just to get some more stuff in. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, yeah, it's pretty much the same phone. Their DigiTimes did also leak the information that uh, it seems Apple's manufacturing providers are ramping up production of force touch screens, which does, again, uh, even though DigiTimes is kind of a sketchy news source, they are pretty reliable when it comes to manufacturing the information that the force touch will be happening on the 6S. Yeah, so that's pretty much a sure thing at this point. Mm -hmm. So thanks again, Pubsters, for joining us on another episode of the Apple Pub. Do let us know if you think Apple is doing the right thing by killing off the 4-inch iPhones, or if you think they're kind of leaving people in the dark and they really shouldn't do that. Yeah, were you really happy to have the new 6s, or do you kind of want to go back to how the 5s were? So again, thanks for watching the video. Like us if you liked the video. Subscribe to help support the channel. And we'll see you again next time. Take care, Pupsters. Stay classy.